Welcome to Sunday service at the Unity Center for Positive Living. Let's start our time together today with a reading from the Daily Word. <clears throat> Sunday, February 5th. Unity co-founder Myrtle Fillmore's healing journey began when she changed her mind. Inspired by the words of a healing practitioner, she took this affirmation to heart. I am a child of God, and therefore I do not inherit sickness. After two years of persistent health-affirming meditation, prayer, and practice, Myrtle was healed. Her faith made her well. Myrtle Fillmore lived joyously and vigorously for many more years. I take inspiration from this story. I, too, am a living expression of God. I feel my body's quickening response as I claim my inheritance of divine life, vi vibrantly active in every cell of my body. Good nutrition, exercise, and rest support my healing practice. My faith is making me well. And the scripture today from Mark chapter 5, verse 34. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Our opening statement today, my faith is making me well. Let's say that together. My faith is making me well. Our chaplain will lead us in our opening prayer. Good morning. It's a pleasure to see all of you here today and to be with you virtually and in person. So I'm going to read from our um, Christmas booklet because uh, in the back there are all the powers of unity. So today's power is strength. So I would like to share that with you today. There is a deep and abiding joy set before me. My circumstances are not the source of my joy, for it is sourced in the infinite wellspring of the divine. Therefore, I can endure all things. There is in me an essential core that cannot suffer. When I feel pain or suffering in myself or in the world around me, it does not consume me. I know pain and suffering are temporary, and I take action to support myself or others. Suffering and conflict are not the main events of my life, nor the primary motivators. I center my awareness on love, connection, and deep abiding joy. These become my strength, my superpower, that helps me endure any circumstance so that the main events in my life comprise love, connection, and joy. 
In this knowing, I am filled with compassion for myself and others. And there's a little affirmation I'd like to share. Sourced in divine joy, my inner strength is enduring. Okay, so with that, let's go within and center ourselves <clears throat> in our oneness with spirit and our connection with each other. For we are all connected to, through that divine light that lives within each one of us. And within that light is our strength, ever available and always working for our highest good. So let us just know that in the core of our being that we are truly divine beings. And we're here to live our best life in joy and love and help our brothers and sisters along the way. So with this, I am truly grateful and I release my word knowing that it is so, and so it is. Well, let's sing together. Stand if you're able. Find your melodies from the Heart Songbook. We're going to sing song number 12. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so Well, good morning. Welcome again to Everett Unity. I love that song. It's like a mantra, isn't it? You can just, the words are easy and you can repeat it again and again. I've mentioned it before when I send you those lyrics on Saturday. So many of these songs I know by heart and then I get them stuck in my head. So then for the whole day, I'm singing that song. That's a good one to have stuck in your mind. Well, I'd like to introduce you to the people who are most visibly serving you today. You were greeted by our ushers, which include Chris and Annie and Randy. We don't have any social hour hosts today, so you're just going to have to talk among yourselves and entertain yourselves. We do have a jigsaw puzzle started downstairs, if you want to come downstairs and finish up a jigsaw puzzle. Audio and video is being uh, provided today by Rick and Walter Candy, our chaplain. You met her a moment ago. Our musicians are Terry and Josh. My name is Cindy, and our speaker this morning is Reverend Joanna Gabriel. Welcome back. We've missed you. She we let her take January off. Yeah. 
So if you brought your cell phone in with you this morning, would you take a moment and turn that off for us so that we can have a nice quiet meditation here in a moment? And uh, I'm looking around, everyone looks pretty familiar. So you know we have a series of guest speakers that speak here every month. And you know if you wanted more information about Unity, you could get a packet on your way out. Good to know. I do have a couple of announcements to make. I'd like to remind you that next Sunday after service will be our annual membership meeting. As I said in the email to you yesterday, that is required by our bylaws. It's an opportunity for staff and board to communicate with all of the members to let them know what's been happening and to elect two members to the board of directors. This year, we are interested to know if you have a burning desire to serve on the board, if you've ever thought about being a board member, if you are interested in knowing more. It's a three-year term. A lot of people go, holy smokes, three years. Uh, the board typically meets once a month, but there are times when we do have more frequent meetings and we're doing a combination of sometimes on Zoom and sometimes in person and sometimes hybrid, a little bit of both. Um, and we do understand that sometimes when you make a commitment like that over a three-year term, your life changes and something happens. And so it is not, uh, we, don't, we don't hold you in servitude. If you come on the board and something happens, we do allow you to leave your, leave your post early, as they say. I'll just tell you a little bit. To serve on the board, you have to have a desire because it is a commitment. It is a position of service. People think, ooh, I'm all fancy because I'm on the board. And everybody knows, oh, no, it's not fancy. You're, it, you're serving. Um, you have to endeavor to live your life in accord with the Jesus Christ principles of love and truth as taught by unity. You further the work of this ministry for, through your active interest, love, and support. You are sincere and a continuing student of unity, conversant in its teachings. You've demonstrated leadership capabilities. You've been a member of the Unity Center for Positive Living for at least one year, and you have completed a basic Unity Principles class or equivalent practical teachings. So if you feel so moved to that, would you talk to me after service? Uh, we'll be putting together a slate of electors to present to the board, and uh, our nominating committee will take a look at that slate, and we'd love to hear if you're interested. Um, uh, let me see, Katie, I'm looking at Candy, wrong K. Katie has an announcement she'd like to make, so come up, please, Katie. Good morning. Uh, I'm Katie Evans, and I, just as a sidebar, I served on the board, and it's really a lot of fun. And you, <laughs> and you get to be on the vanguard of what's happening now, and you get to create what's happening now. So if you are interested in, in doing that, um, please talk to Cindy. One more letter from the YWCA, and w we donated... Um, we adopted five families over Christmas, and I don't know about you, but I like the feedback from, you know, what we did and what we accomplished, so I just want to read you a letter from the YWCA. Due to your, and this is for everybody, due to your generous contributions, we were able to provide gift cards for 216 families, including 414 children and 30 disabled adults. We had five families. 11 children out of this total. Once again, the gift card model provided a positive experience for families as this enabled them to purchase the exact gifts that were desired by their children. Your gift was a blessing to the family that you sponsored, families, and our YWCA families appreciate your participation in this program immensely. We heard stories from parents who were moved to tears with gratitude for their gifts and the families asked that we let the, their sponsors know how much their gifts meant to them. One mom, while expressing her appreciation, told us, we are always telling our kids no to luxuries that we can't afford, but this program allowed us to say yes to their most desired wishes. This helps us feel like a normal family, shopping for gifts for our kids. 
To me, this sums up our program, allowing families in need to forget about their struggles for a short period and create special holiday memories for their children. Thank you for your support of the YWCA and the women and families we serve. You are the reason we are able to continue the work we do, and we would not be able to assist our clients without partners like you. Best wishes for a happy new year, Carla. Isn't that cool? I know. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We'll see you again next Christmas. <laughs> That really is a moving testimonial. And we're always just so thrilled because this community is so generous. I mean, you know, we start out with this moderate goal and we always end up having more money and more resources and more families, you know, to be able to adopt five families is amazing. Um, and it reminded me of this desire that we have for fellowship, to be in community with each other, to have those connections. And I just want to give a shout out. Uh, Friday night, you've been hearing a lot about that First Friday Family Fun Night. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get teary eyed because it was really an amazing evening. We had 16 people come to hang out with us on Friday night. And I think part of it is, it's the one time, I mean, in our, our connection here at Everett Unity, you're, you're learning a thing, you're giving a tithe, there is an expectation of you, and Friday night, fun night, there is no expectation. You don't have to bring a thing, you don't have to pay a tithe, you don't have to play a game, you don't have to do anything, come and be who you are. Josh came and played music, oh my gosh, thank you so much. He did some solo playing and then Rick joined him and Patty joined in on harmony at one point and at one point I looked around the room and we were playing Mexican train at one table and we had a jigsaw puzzle at another table and they were playing music and people were singing along with the music and of course we were eating food that you're not supposed to eat anymore and then I wonder why my clothes don't fit anymore. Ooh. But it was just so sweet and so precious and I thought that's what we want, isn't it? That's what we come to church for, is that community. So I want to give a shout out to people like Rick, who said, hey, let's start up that game night thing again that we used to do. And Yvonne, who isn't here, but she's the one who kind of was the juice behind it and said, hey, I'll make a flyer, we'll make a plan, we'll do a thing. And then all the rest of you who show up and bring a little snack and bring a little treat and bring your little game bag and let us play games and be together. I mean, I just want to give you a big shout out. Thank you for making it such a fun event. Awesome. So let's sing together again. Josh will lead us in another song. Uh, stand if you like, and we will sing uh, from the Melodies from the Heart songbook, song number 16. I stand here in my power, I am fully realized I am free of limitations, I am holy, I am divine With endless energy and talent, I manifest my dreams All my cells are in alignment, I'm as God created me I am I am, I am, I am I stand here in my power, I am fully realized I am free of limitations, I am holy, I am divine With endless energy and talent I manifest my dreams All my cells are in alignment I'm as God created me I am I am I am I am I 
stand here in my power I am fully realized I am free of limitations I am holy, I'm divine With endless energy and talent I manifest my dreams All my cells are in alignment I'm as God created me And I am 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 We'll settle in now and get ready for our meditation. Good morning. It's wonderful to be with you this morning, and already in our short time together, we've had some powerful messages, haven't we? I am blessed. I am the infinite wellspring. And so what it seems appropriate to me is for us to just breathe and just let all of that in. Let all of that settle right into center. Your infinite wellspring, right here in center where you are connected to all that is. And so if it feels comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes. And just do what you need to do to get centered, to get comfy, to let that seat hold you, support you. Embrace you and breathe. Breathing and allowing, that's the task here. Breathing and allowing, that's it. Breathing and allowing the truth of the I am presence within to come forth. I am blessed. I am. Breathing and allowing. And any thoughts that come through, just let them pass by. They just are. Just bring the focus back to the breath. Inhaling. Exhaling. our constant restart button. The tool we've had since the moment we arrived in this life. And every moment since. We are blessed. And there's an infinite wellspring of love, of strength, of power within this I am presence. Oh, dear ones, breathe and feel it. Feel it in you. Allow it. This infinite wellspring of healing comes forth. It bubbles forth. 
Send it in whatever area in you that could use some healing, some support, some kindness, some forgiveness, some letting go. some understanding. Breathe. And we are reminded that it's only when we can let go, understand, forgive, accept right here. It is only then that we can begin to do that for anyone else. And maybe we're out of practice with this one here. So we breathe right here and now before anything else this day. I am. I am that wellspring, infinite wellspring of power, of love, of strength, of compassion for myself. Breathe. I am grateful. I am grateful for the reminder. And from this sweet space, you may think of someone who could also use this reminder right now. That whatever's going on for them in this moment of now, they may not be thinking or feeling the infinite wellspring of power that exists within them. The circumstances may feel bigger right now. And so because we're all one, we can hold that truth for them in this moment, and it makes a difference. And so this one you're thinking of, or maybe there's more than one you're thinking of, if it feels comfortable, say their name aloud right now so that we can hold them with you. Dear ones, you are an infinite wellspring of power, of love, of strength. Of divine order, of healing, of hope, of infinite possibility. And in this truth, in this knowing, all things are possible. And we know the highest outcome is already unfolding. Let it be so and so it is. 
and for our world. For the leaders, for the followers, for the environment, for the elders, for the children, for the four leggeds, for all life, that as we claim the truth of us as infinite wellspring of power, love, and light, all life is lifted up. Let it be so, and so it is. Amen.
Josh and Terry, that was wonderful. Thank you. It's February. I don't know. I mean, the last time I was here, it wasn't Christmas yet. Now it's February. I don't understand. But nobody can explain it to me. That's all right. We just keep trucking, don't we? Keep trucking. Remember that? Keep trucking? Okay. So this year, um, Unity is doing a theme thing so that all the churches can be sharing and thinking about the same sorts of things at the same time. And they're doing the 12 powers this year, which I think is really cool. Works out very nicely, one a month. And this is the month of strength. At least that's the one we're doing this month, right? And that's all that matters. So, and the 12 powers, are you clear about what the 12 powers are? You know, Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, you know, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore were the ones who started Unity. And um, Charles got the idea, the concept of the 12 powers, because he was looking for ways to let us know who we are. And he had some pretty interesting ways, and he was very, a very prolific writer, not an easy one to read if you're familiar with Charles's work. Myrtle's easier to read. But he has a lot to say and a lot of important information. And the whole idea of the 12 powers are that we have these characteristics in us innately. We came in with them. We were hardwired with them. You didn't have to earn them. There isn't anything you had to do to acquire these powers. You have them. The issue is being aware that you have them and then choosing to use them. Now that's the deal, isn't it? There's the rub right there. Using them. And so that's the opportunity. So anytime we get the opportunity to talk about the 12 powers, Charles's 12 powers, it's just merely another way to be reminded of who we are as infinite wellsprings of the one, of life, of God, of spirit, of universal truth, whatever name you give that essence of life. And it's helpful to be reminded of these tools, these powers at this time, because we can use all the help we can get living in this world. Don't you think? I guess so. <laughs> and so this month is strength. And Charles, if you look it up, Charles Fillmore calls strength the energy of God, and I really like that because it's a neat way to think about strength and to use strength as the energy of God. I've got the energy of God. Okay, that works. Freedom from weakness, stability of character, power to withstand temptation, capacity to accomplish. Strength is physical, mental, and spiritual. All strength originates in spirit the thought and the word spiritually expressed be, being the manifestation. Strength is a quality that we can and must develop if we are to bring forth our God-given potential. It is to be brought forth along with the other 11 powers, but it but must be basic in our growth. And there's lots written about the 12 powers and how you might use them. And a good example of strength, not just strength like this kind of strength, although this kind of strength is really helpful. You could see I could use some more of this kind of strength. <laughs> but the strength of being, the strength of knowing in any given moment that you have everything you need to be in this moment. And that's important because there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot out there that would, would want you to think that there's not much hope.
And Charles would differ with you. He would beg to differ with that. He would say, oh, no. No, that's, the pro that's why we're in the mess we're in, because we don't understand who we are and the power that we have to make it different, to heal it, to lift ourselves up. That's the problem. There's room for all kinds of hope, endless hope, when we begin to really realize that we have what it takes. We're pushing it really far. We're, put, we're taking the hardest road. Oh, my goodness. We seem to want to take the hardest road. But where does it end? With the truth of who we are, dear ones, that's the only place it can end. Do you see that? Do you get that? Yes, we're making a mess. Yes, we are. Yes, we're taking it down as far as we can take it. But the truth is the truth of who we are. We're fighting it. We're fighting it really hard. And you know, you've heard me say so many times here that there's more love on the planet than there ever has been. And I know you go, I've heard you say that, Joanna, but have you looked out there lately? I don't think so. There's more love on the planet than there ever was. And here's the thing. What you're seeing every day and what you're hearing about every day is love getting in there and playing havoc with everything unlike itself. And there's a lot, isn't there? Playing havoc with turning, it's ups, up, upsetting the apple cart of control and power over. It's getting in there and undoing those chains that have bound us for so long. And you're seeing it. You're seeing it in people out there standing up in ways they have never done before and would never do before. Why? Because they're feeling the strength they have inside of themselves for the first time. Do you realize the courage it takes for these people to go out and stand up and fight for themselves? The love that's in there upsetting the apple cart is showing up as strength. That's the strength we're talking about here. Make sense? Questions or comments about that? And we're seeing it if you're paying attention. Oh, yeah, there's plenty to look at and say, oh, oh, you bet. But every day there's another example of the light getting through. Sometimes it's just a pinprick. For example, I'll just quickly, I have to just share this. I've been sharing this through this last month. I just will quickly share it. I just have to. Because, you know, the first Monday night of this year, you could be, one thing you could have been watching was all the chaos in Congress while they're trying to do an election. If you change the channel, there was a football game on. Did anybody see the, that game, that Monday night game? Did you see that? I wasn't watching it, but when everything happened, all, everything went to that game, so then you got to see it. So you know what I'm talking about. You're talk, I'm talking about the young man, uh, DeMar Hamlin, who, who was injured, who looked like he was, had left the building. And in that moment, I don't know if you got to see, even if you look at the video, you can feel the energy. You can feel the energy of the whole world catching its breath. Catching its breath in that moment, the whole world catching its breath in that moment through that unfolding on the football field in Cincinnati, Ohio. Everything stopped. And this is 
This is football. This is big business. These are two teams that were in the running for the, the Super Bowl. They had to play. This is a big deal. In the past, what would happen is they'd take care of it, they'd go to commercial, the announcers would sit and talk for a while, and then they'd start the game up again after they scraped off the field whatever needed to get scraped off. Right? And in fact, back in the early 70s, there was a player who did die during the game, and they went to commercial and went to the announcers and removed the, the, the person from the field and finished the game. They didn't do that here. They could not do that here. They never did play that game. Fortunately, the young man survived and he's doing well. And you may have heard the, the little side story that went with it. He is, is, he is from Pittsburgh and he had this little... Um, uh, cause for the kids in Pittsburgh and he was raising money over the holidays for the kids for toys and school supplies and all that kind of stuff and it was doing pretty well it had over a hundred thousand dollars in its GoFundMe thing and after this thing happened people just wanted to do something and if you look at it right now it's got over nine million dollars in it from from contributions all over the world why? Because in that moment, there was a pinprick of light, and we all felt it, and the world caught its breath. And even if you go look at the video now, you can feel it. It's there, and it's a reminder at the very beginning of our year, we're in a different time now, dear ones. Yes, it's getting intense, it's getting difficult, but if you're paying attention, it's there. And it will continue to be there, I promise you. And so watch for it. Watch for it. Practice your eye for the miracles. Keep your ear to the ground, listening for the miracles. They're there. And you can be a part of them as you develop your own. It's, our exercises are the 12 powers. Because strength is an important one. That's how we're getting through this. That's how we will get through this. That's how DeMar Hamlin's getting through it. Do you see? If you're concerned, here's the other one and then I'll go. But I have to tell you this. Did you, any of you see over the holidays the, um, the, the, the documentary called, uh, or not documentary, but it, 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 I guess it is now, but when it was on, it was called the Earthshot Prize? Did any of you see that? Oh, goodness. Well, you need to see it. You can watch it on PBS. I highly, 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 highly recommend that you watch it. And the reason is this. It's called the Earthshot Prize. And the reason it's called Earthshot is because, remember, some of you were alive with me back in the 60s when we had President Kennedy. And President Kennedy, you remember the moonshot thing when he was about the moonshot? And everybody thought that was the craziest thing in the world. Moonshot. Right. Yeah, sure. We're going to go to the moon. And in 1969, we did go to the moon. And so what this is then named is the earth shot because it looks like the earth is going down. It doesn't look good. And so they're calling it the earth shot prize. And um, Prince William from um, the United Kingdom is, is at, the, at the foundation of this. And he's bringing, getting people, famous people, celebrities, people with money, with deep pockets and stuff involved in this. And what it's about is they're getting people from all over the world to submit their ideas for how to deal with climate change. And they've divided it into five categories. And in this show, this earth shot prize, you get to see what, and these are people from all over the world, just ordinary folks who've come up with ideas, and they're really amazing ideas, and they, and they, they showed, I think, I don't know, three or four from each category, and then they announced the winners for each category, and each category, the person that won got a million dollars to put back into their business. For example, there was this sweet little woman from Kenya, and she, and in her little town where she lives, they cook their food in open fires inside their house where they live. And because of that, they all have breathing problems because it's toxic. 
They're breathing smoke right into their lungs, and it's, it's toxic. And her little girl, when she was two, actually fell into the fire and had a terrible burn. And so this, this woman in Kenya was very motivated, and she invented a smokeless stove. And it cost $10. And now 300,000 of them have been distributed around Africa, or people are having, using cooking with a smokeless stove that's, that's stopping those toxic emissions. I know, I know. And so, and so she was on there, and so she was talking about it. So if you watch, and so there was another couple of young men from India, Australia or India, I forget which it is, but you'll see. They're using, they found taking seaweed and they've learned a way to make it into like saran wrap to use for plastic, to replace plastic. I'm telling you people, we're doing it. And what's happening now is people are starting to get known, getting the money, getting the support, because that's what they need. We can do this, it's already done. It just needs to have the support. And so please, if you get the chance, it's on PBS, it's called Earthshot Prize, watch it. You will cry because you'll, hear, you'll see the enthusiasm and the potential for what's coming, that we do have the solutions. The strength is there. It's just that we haven't been hearing about it, and now we're starting to. And then you can see what you can do to be in support of that, whatever that looks like. And it will lift you and give you hope. There's reason to be hopeful, dear ones. It's who we truly are. We're just taking a hard road. Get it? Questions or comments? Yes, dear. Mushrooms. Okay, so there, there is a company in the Northeast that's making furniture, clothing, and what else? A lot of different things out of mushrooms, and when you're done with them, they're compostable. And you could probably put them on your pizza, too, if you wanted to. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for that. Yes. Oh, uh, CPR, CPR, thank you. Damar Hamlin, the young man who was injured at the football game, has paired up with a, a heart association to support CPR because it's CPR and a defibrillator is what saved his life because his heart had stopped. He was out of here. And so uh, encouraging everyone to, to learn CPR. Save more lives. You see, dear ones, it's there. We just have to be paying attention. Don't let yourself be taken down by the next thing because it, it, it's getting louder and louder because as love gets in there and starts turning upside down the way we've always done it, people are fighting that. It, it makes them afraid in a lot of ways. They don't understand who they truly are and that they have what they need. And until they do, it's gonna be interesting to say the least. But you and I, as conscious beings, understand the bottom line, and that's what we need. And call on the strength in you, the energy of God in you, every morning when you wake up. To let the strength in you, the energy of God, lead the way this day. For the opportunity to be reminded of the truth of who we are, with the energy of God and the wellspring of infinite power. We are grateful, and so it is. Happy New Year, everybody. Much love. Thank you, Joanne. It reminded me, in our class that just finished up, The Five Principles, one of the things that we talk about is that focusing on what you want. What you focus on, you get more of. What you focus on, you create. 
And I think what you're talking about is that shift that we're making instead of protesting against the thing that we don't want, which calls more attention to it, we are focusing on the thing that we want, using that strength to find the, the mushroom furniture and the, and, and the reminder that, that we talk a lot, I mean, our vocabulary is extremely violent. We all know that. I mean, even, even you talk about fighting, which we have, a, I should say I, have a negative connotation about that idea of fighting because you're fighting against something. But if you are fighting for something by loving it more, by loving more, by getting in there and turning that apple cart upside down with the love, that's what brings about that change. So this thing that happened to Damar Hamlin, worst thing in the world could happen to him, his family, his friends, the people who experienced that. We really did have a collective gasp of horror that we were witnessing something that was frightening, that was negative, but look what God did with that. Look at the $9 million fund for the children, the teaming up with the Heart Association for the CPR. So it's a reminder to all of us that the worst thing that happens to you in, the, in your whole imagination can end up being the best thing that ever happened and leave an amazing legacy for all of us to work towards making big change in the world. It's really, really powerful. Thank you very much. Use that strength for good, right? Okay, well, let's sing together. Josh is going to lead us in another song from the same songbook, song number 29, Stand If You Like, and we'll sing together. And how fitting that this is, this song, what you guys just talked about was a lot of grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a soul like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see was grace that taught my heart to see and grace my fears relief how precious did that grace appear how I first believe. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Well, now it's time to bless our offering and thank our Creator for the many blessings that we have been given and affirm the truth about ourselves. So let's start with that now. This is how it goes. My name is, and you use your name, and I am prosperous always and in all ways. So let's say that together. My name is, and I am prosperous 
always and in all ways. Remember, always means forever and ever and ever and ever. And all, <laughs> I should never take a day away. <laughs> and all, always it, in all forms, that's right. Forever and in all forms, you can recover. So let's take our offering. We can hold it next to our hearts, literally or figuratively. Think about that prosperity that we have. The gift of being here together, that blessing of prosperity throughout our lives, through our lives, and through us out into the world. And let's bless our offering together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I share, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen. I want to say a little something. Um, yesterday I found out my soloist for today was sick, so I sent out the word, and Josh said, whatever you need, I'll help you out. So I wanted just to shout out to Josh. And also that song, the first song that we did today is his original song. So he's like, so I'm like, I'll do a solo, you do a solo, we'll, we'll get it, we'll make it happen. So I think it's working out pretty good. <laughs> if you know this song, um, I'd love it if I could hear some voices singing along. If you know it, it'd be awesome. He ain't heavy, he's my brother.
Wow, thank you. And thank you for all the wonderful music we had today. You're so creative, Josh. We're grateful to have your presence with us. So let us all come together now in gratitude and know that we are truly thankful for all the gifts that come forward financially, spiritually, emotionally, for all the sport and love that keeps our doors open so that we may gather, whether in person or virtually, and know that we are truly God's beloveds. And it's wonderful to have this time to share with one another. So for that, I am truly grateful. And I release this word knowing that it is truly so, and so it is. Amen. Okay. Well, thank you, Candy. Thank you for another wonderful Sunday morning. Candy will be available after the service to provide prayer support. If you'd like to take a few moments, come on down here with her right after the service. Remember, there isn't any social hour, but you're welcome to come downstairs and visit for a few minutes and put a few pieces in that jigsaw puzzle, right? I do have just, before we circle around to say our prayer protection, I want to remind you of a couple of things. This week on Tuesday night is the first um, Tuesday night session of the Happy Hearts group. They're going to start at 7 o'clock. As with all of our programs, I really encourage you to check that out. You know, it might not be something you're interested in long term, but check it out this week and see if you're interested. It's the second no, first and third Tuesday of every month. I had to stop and think, wait, it's February. Which week is this first? First and third Tuesday of every month. And then, of course, our Course in Miracles classes started back in person on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. We're doing a hybrid. God bless Pam for hanging in through that. It's not the easiest trick, this having people in the room and having people online at the same time. May the force be with us. Uh, but message is still the same. So for those of you who had been part of our Course in Miracles class before, we hope you'll come back and join us again on Wednesday mornings. And then, of course, you got the word. We're going to be doing our Applebee's Flapjack breakfast fundraiser again. Remember, we did that in 2019. I say we. I was not here then. I was getting a grandchild, so I was in California. But you guys went and had flapjacks at Applebee's down on Everett Mall Way and had a blast. The board of directors will be serving your food. There's a limited menu, but it's really delicious. Tickets are $10 a person. It is Saturday, March 4th from 9 to 11 a.m., and it's $10 per person. Chris in the back has tickets, and you can buy them. Um, Annie has tickets as well. Oh, oh, well, so I can see where we're going with this. This is, this is like the competition now, so... Hmm, who do you buy from? I'm going to stay out of the middle of this, but, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Invite your friends, invite your neighbors, come and have breakfast with us on uh, Saturday, March 4th. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it is really great. A lot of fun. Thank you, Chris. For, thank you for adding that, but also thank you for bringing it up again and reminding us and being the, being the leader to, to get it done, follow up and get us our tickets and all that. So thank you very much. So, okay. Well, let's us, Patty. Oh, the meditation class. Yes. See, I didn't write it down. Oh, dang it. In your like to call your attention to the bulletin you received when you came in this morning. It's all in the bulletin. Uh, Lonnie did uh, the first of four mindfulness meditation classes on Thursday night. Amazing, amazing program. Really, really enjoyed it. Yes, 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 yes. 
Um, and it is not a closed class. If you missed this last Thursday, it doesn't matter. You can come Thursday, this coming Thursday night at 7 o'clock. It's an hour long. You'll get an a update on the kind of the instruction, the methodology, the, the thought process behind this type of meditation, and then you will get to practice it. It will be quiet, seated meditation. It will also be walking meditation. So we're going to spend most of that hour in meditation because as Lonnie so eloquently told us, you can go to a sewing class and you can have the instructor tell you all about sewing, but you do not know how to sew until you start sewing something. And meditation is the same way. So we're going to practice this wonderful um, experience of being in silent meditation together for an extended period of time. We do guided meditation here on S Sunday mornings, which is wonderful, but silent meditation is a power unto itself. So please feel free to join us again. And that's, a, as with Happy Hearts, that's a love offering uh, class. So thanks, and thanks for reminding me. Okay, now let's circle around the room. And I heard rumor you did a modified circle last week. Let's do that again. We'll make a circle around the two side aisles. And we'll join hands or stand a little bit separate, whatever you're comfortable with. Look at that. Dun, 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 dun. One, uh, one thing we've, one thing the pandemic taught us is to be grateful for the small things, right? Making a circle in our church. All right, let's say our prayer protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Mm -hmm.